Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? Well, that's an interesting story. I, I grew up in New York City. My mother was killed by an automobile in the country outside of New York while walking with my younger sister. Uh, and because my father had disappeared at an early, before I was even born, well, before I, we moved out to the country, um, we went to live with uh, my mother's sister. Uh, and she couldn't take care of us, so she sent us to an orphan asylum in New York City, the Hebrew Orphan Asylum, which is the greatest thing that ever happened to me because the librarian one day, I was about nine and a half years old at that time, the librarian one day uh, said to me, how would you like to work for me in the library? And I said, I'd love it. Never worked in the library before. And so she sent me, she brought me into the library and said, You see all these books? These are all fairy tales. And the kids in the orphanage, there was 500 girls, 500 boys. This is in the middle of New York City. The, the, they take the books out and then they bring them back and throw them in the piles. So she said, I want you to arrange them neatly. So I said, Sure. Three weeks later, I said, I'm ready. I'll show you. Of course, she'd been watching me. Uh, anyway, she came over, and there the books were absolutely beautiful. The big red books, middle-sized red books, small-sized red books, yellow books, black books, and on the same. She said, Herman, it's beautiful. There's only one thing you, you, you haven't realized, that all of the fairy tales written by one person is not all the same color. They're, they may be big, but they're all fairy tales, so you should really file them, do the shelves according to the author, not the color. <laughs> so that was my first experience with, uh, with um, plant arrangement. But uh, it was a wonderful, a wonderful world that I lived in, in the orphanage. She took me to live with her about five years later four and a half years later, and uh, I knew her until she died at the age of 102, and I, 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 I saw her periodically all of the rest of her life until she was about 101 and a half. She called me, she was living in Florida at the time, and said, Herman, I'd like you to come and visit me, and I thought, you know, we wrote letters to each other all the time. Uh, her handwriting, which was absolutely beautiful, had changed. That was very clumsy. So I said, oh, ma'am, I'll come out immediately. And I spent two weeks with her. And um, she died about uh, a month later. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, there's a history behind everything, you realize. Anyway, so this, this is the result of collecting in Central America with my wife. And this, this, this is the tallest tree in the Central American forest. Uh, a lot of trees come up to about, um, oh, uh, 50 feet or 60 feet. And this thing goes up to 150 feet. And it's a fantastic world out there. And uh, I brought back two, two babies, two small ones, and planted them. And I try to prevent them from getting this big. So I, I, I knew that they grew rapidly with water. So I, I planted them and then um, at the surface I put a lot of soil and small rocks that the, the roots would go out that way. And for two months, for two months, it grew very nicely but small. And then suddenly took off, the roots went down. <laughs> the roots are down here about five or six feet. And I have to keep cutting it down continuously because it's trying to get up to 150 feet. And it never will, of course. But you can see the, the, the branches. Uh, like, anyway, this is a story. Everything ha has a story. 
Uh, this is one of the nice things about being a botanist, being a collector, and being a writer. I publish books about these things, so it's it's a wonderful world. And all of these things, all of these plants that you see around here, I I'm getting old, and there are some of these plants that have, you know, the genus is and the species and so on. There are species and then specific names of the plants and the species. I can remember the species very well, but I'm not sure about, I have two or three hundred kinds of one species here. I'm not sure, so I don't, I can't really depend on my memory anymore. But uh, these are all plants I've collected all over the world. And I look at them and I don't have to travel anymore because I can, I can transport myself to where I found them. Anyways, that's a little biography. Okay. You'll get a lot of biography so, before you finish. Well, what exactly is your profession as a doctor? What do you do? Well, when I... That was a, that was a complicated story, but uh, fascinating. From the orphanage, I, I, we went to school around the orphanage in little high school, and uh, little uh, public schools and so on. Um, I, I played hooky a good deal, uh, but because I was a, the librarian was my mentor, and the head of the orphanage was madly in love with her, so she could do anything, and anything she was fond of was uh, led a separate life. But uh, I used to take time off and I'd go to the museums in New York um, and spend half the day there. Um, and then, just before I became a senior in high school, um, I decided that I'd uh, really do much better and spent a lot of time. And I uh, got, uh, got AAAs all the way through and uh, got a scholarship to Cornell. And. Um, went to Cornell as an undergraduate and graduated from Cornell with the highest grade they ever saw, 99.9. <laughs> and from Cornell, uh, it was a complicated world um, from Cornell. From Cornell I went out to, uh, I decided I'd leave New York City and leave the East and come out West. And so I, I uh, went to um, uh, California um, in Mill Valley. Um, actually, it was across the bay from Mill Valley. And uh, I got a job in the botanical garden there. And I, I worked there for about six and a half years. <coughs> At first, I was an assistant, and I became an assistant professor there. I found that I was, I found that I was being asked to write letters of recommendation to medical school, to the kids at uh, the, the college there, and um, uh, some of them were so awful, and you had to be very careful about what you said. You know, you couldn't say this is a, this is a nut here. You can't take him. <laughs> Uh, and so after six and a half years of playing around with words, I decided to uh, go to medical school myself. Some of these kids were actually going to medical school. And so I, I applied to 14 medical schools. And one wonderful day, one wonderful weekend on a Saturday, I was accepted at uh, Cornell in New York, Columbia in New York, Johns Hopkins, and Harvard. And so I went to Harvard. 